a free reusable mask for every resident. Tomasic Foundation's latest nationwide exercise begins on Monday. A record-breaking year for HDB flats with 261 changing hands for at least a million dollars. And weaving his web around the world, Spider-Man tops the local box office in 2021. Welcome to The Big Story, I'm Olivia Quay. You can subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you never miss a single episode. For the sixth time in this pandemic, Tomasic Foundation is offering every resident in Singapore a free reusable mask. And this is what it looks like. The Mask Pure Air Plus mask designed by ST Engineering is more breathable than standard N95 filters and remains breathable even after repeated rinsing. You can collect yours from vending machines island-wide, including in community centres and clubs and even some bus interchanges. The masks come in two sizes, medium and large, and should fit all adults and some older teenagers. Remember to bring along your government-issued IDs for barcode scanning. Collection starts at 10 a.m. on Monday, January the 10th until January 23rd. A second straight Chinese New Year under COVID-19 with the task force confirming yesterday that current rules will remain in place in view of a likely Omicron wave. Gatherings have been capped at five since November and households are allowed to receive up to five visitors a day and visitors should limit themselves to one visit a day. For CNY 2021, every household could have up to eight visitors with a maximum limit of two household visits each day. And even when a family gathered at a restaurant, multiple table bookings were not permitted. Lo Hei had to be quiet without the verbalising of the usual auspicious phrases. How will restaurants, Chinese restaurants particularly, cope with another Chinese New Year period under COVID-19 rules? Joining me is Mr. Andrew Chiu, President and CEO of Tonglok Group. Welcome to The Big Story, Andrew. How was Tonglok Group affected by the measures last CNY and do you expect to be hit similarly this time around? Well, last year we were able to accept uh, up to eight people uh, in a group, right? But then on the second week onward, there was restriction or news about uh, outbreak. So people started to get worried about their own safety. But this year, I think the situation is quite different because most of us uh, have been vaccinated and only vaccinated people can dine out. So I think the sentiment is quite different this year. Well, that's good to know. Um, Andrew, aside from, of course, you know, groups of families and friends, restaurants also host corporate gatherings pre-COVID-19. Last year, companies weren't allowed to organise gatherings or activities like Lohe. So what has losing this segment of your customers meant for Tonglok? Oh, you know, uh, Chinese New Year business is very important to any Chinese restaurant because mm. uh, this is actually... Uh, the month of festivities, uh, it is not just 15 days. We are talking about three weeks at least. So the celebration start at least one week before the Chinese New Year and plus another 15 days from the first day to the 15th day of Chinese New Year. So that's three weeks. And it is a very important income source of income for Chinese restaurants. Well, Andrew, besides, of course, um, being the CEO and president of Tonglok Group, you're also on the management committee of the Restaurant Association of Singapore. How do you see 2022 panning out for restaurants here? Oh, uh, well, I think uh, we, we, are ho we are hoping that the pandemic will soon become endemic. And as uh, the government uh, has uh, keep assuring us that we are still on track uh, to living with COVID, uh, and uh, I see that uh, F&B uh, scene will definitely recover, uh, but we don't know uh, when exactly it will. But I think uh, we are on track, uh, even with Omicron, uh, you know, uh, making its way uh, to create a problem for us again. 
the good restaurants in Singapore are still doing well. And you can see there's a chock-a-block of uh, uh, bookings at the uh, uh, good restaurants uh, around, around the island. Well, all the best to you, Andrew, in the new year. Andrew Chu, President and CEO of Tonglok Group. A quick look at today's other headlines. 261 HGB flats sold for at least a million dollars in 2021, setting a new record. That's a big jump from the 82 that changed hands a year earlier. For December, resale prices climbed 0.8%, rising for the 18th consecutive month. Not much of an impact from the property cooling measures, which kicked in around the second half of the month. Fans and reporters waiting for Novak Djokovic last night at Melbourne's Tullamarine Airport, but in vain because in an unexpected turn of events, his visa has been revoked by Australia's border force, barring him from entering the country. Two days after his vaccine exemption was approved, he touched down in Melbourne at about 11.30pm, but was ushered into an isolation room when authorities said his visa didn't allow for medical exemptions. Djokovic has been transported to a quarantine hotel where he's now holed up while his lawyers fight against his deportation. His case remains in limbo with a court adjourning proceedings until 10am on Monday. The Grammy Awards postponed indefinitely due to the rapid spread of the Omicron variant. The show was meant to take place at an arena in Los Angeles on January 31st. In 2021, the show did go ahead, but in March. And it included a mix of pre-recorded and live segments in front of a small, socially distanced crowd. And we're back with the first live picks of 2022. Today we have fresh box office numbers for Singapore and a newly opened European and Asian fusion restaurant. But first, the hits and misses of 2021 with a journalist, Jan Lee. Jan, as you know, because of the pandemic, cinemas here have suffered under various restrictions. Was that reflected in the box office numbers? Yes, to a certain extent. Uh, I mean, you know, 2021, uh, December 2021 was the best the box office has done in two years in Singapore because of Spider-Man No Way Home, which is a huge hit. I think as of now, uh, the latest numbers are already over 12 million in Singapore. Um, for comparison, Avengers Endgame was the biggest movie ever in Singapore and that made about 19 million. So No Way Home is doing very, very, very well. I think as of our count in the story that I wrote, it was at 8.72 million as of December 26. So by that time, it only opened for like 10 days. So clearly there was huge surge in, you know, cinema going and interest because of Spider-Man and hopefully that momentum will carry us through. But as for the other titles, the numbers are not so great, especially compared with like pre-pandemic numbers. So uh, things like the UIP distributed No Time to Die, Fast and Furious 9, uh, were, did not perform up to expectations according to uh, the UIP spokesperson I, I spoke to. Fast and Furious 9, for example, normally would have grossed over 7 million at least. James Bond apparently usually does above uh, 6 million. Uh, so this is also be below, you know, um, expectations. And I think it also had a lot to do with when a movie opened. So, you know, comparatively December, when Spider-Man opened, it was a, a much more, um, I would say the rules were more, a lot more relaxed because we went through two phases of uh, phase two heightened alert in 2021. And during those time, um, dining in was banned. So you couldn't have like popcorn or concessions uh, while watching a movie. And that definitely hurt some of the titles. There was also a 50 packs per hall uh, capacity limit without pre-event testing uh, during some of those periods. So those movies would have been affected as well. So F9 actually did quite well, given that it, perf it actually was, was screened during that uh, period of 50 packs per hall, if I'm not wrong. So those, uh, you know, titles did well considering the pandemic but nothing is back to pre-pandemic numbers aside from you know a big title like spider-man or a very very big title like shang chi so clearly the superheroes are still out there winning um also if you were a smaller film asian films uh, or like a smaller mid-range hollywood title 
because of the um, safe distancing measures that restricted uh, uh, seating, right, the amount of seating you can have in a cinema, uh, the screens just have to be given to the movies that are doing better. So smaller movies that usually might have a longer time or maybe might be allocated one or two screens while something like Spider-Man is screening might lose out on those screens because of the seating um, limitation. So cinemas will have to give priority to films that are doing better. So, you know, the, the Asian film list was a bit dismal, I think, uh, in 2021. Really good points there, Jen. So, a quick one before I let you go. What was your favourite movie of 2021? You mentioned, you know, a lot of Hollywood blockbusters, but, you know, does yours fall in, uh, under that category or is it something totally different and why? Personally, I think one that I really felt like it gave me the experience of like, wow, it's really special being in a movie theatre and it makes such a difference watching it on the big screen. Uh, for me, that was Dune, um, which was the Warner Brothers title. Um, the, the It's sort of like Game of Thrones in space. So it's very uh, beautifully shot. And um, I thought the sets and the go costumes were all gorgeous on the big screen. And I think it really gave me the experience of like, see, I really missed um, movie theatres, you know, um, it's not easy for the cinemas to survive during the pandemic. So if you do love uh, cinema going, if you're somebody who's very invested in uh, watching movies and you love films and you want to watch them on the big screen, do try and head out to cinemas to catch films and do try and um, buy popcorn and buy drinks because cinemas make um, most of their money from concession sales. Thanks so much, Jan. See you next time. We want to know what's your favourite movie for 2021. Do tell us in the comments below. Next up, something to excite your taste buds. Senior food correspondent Wong Ah Yok is here to tell us all about Eclipse. Now, it's a brand new European and Asian fusion restaurant located at the top of the Yu Hua building in Yutong Sen Street. So, Ah Yok, tell us all about Eclipse. What did you like or not like about it? Okay, Eclipse, yeah, like you said just now, is it's at the top of the Yuhua building yeah, in Yuton Sen Street. Yuhua building is really a very iconic building. If you are like driving along Yuton Sen Street or Cross Street, you will not miss it. It's a very, very old building. Uh, it's 95 years old, actually. And it used to be a hotel called Great Southern Hotel. But now everybody knows it as the Yuhua department store. But very few people know that at the rooftop, there's a new restaurant that just opened called Eclipse. And it's a beautiful restaurant. It's, it's actually a very ideal spot for a restaurant because you get a wonderful view of Chinatown from the rooftop. And Eclipse, they've designed it really beautifully. It's a bit... Uh, old glamour but the modern touches as well which goes very well with the theme of the building and the entrance is quite interesting because you actually have to walk into Yu Hua department store on the ground floor then you take the lift up to the sixth floor and when the lift door opens yeah you walk into a different world totally so what i love about the restaurant is really the ambience this is really special to me it's like something i've not seen very often in singapore this old glamour modern combination which works very well uh, in this iconic building the menu uh, is fusion it's uh, western with some i would say some singapore touches because they do things like pumpkin laksa soup and chicken breast and green curry sauce. So it's this kind of uh, fusion food, which might be very interesting to someone uh, young who's not exposed to such food and find it a bit novel. But for me, I think it can be a bit more interesting. Uh, I think maybe we can do something like Western meets Shanghai to go with that that long history, you know, from the 1920s, 1930s, you were thinking of for like a grand Shanghai or uh, glamour, that kind of thing. So it might work better actually than to do things like uh, Western Singaporean. Uh, but yeah, that's just my idea. Well, thanks so much, Ayok. Wong Ayok, the senior food correspondent. If you're looking for more ideas for eating out, how about a seven-course menu at a new Japanese restaurant that Ayok has also reviewed? Check it out in foodpix at str.sg forward slash live. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Olivia Quay. See you tomorrow on The Big Story.